I'm Tom Merritt, editor for CNET.com, and this insider secret is about how to legally copy digital music. Now you may think you know how to legally copy digital music because maybe you've been making cassettes for years and you know all about it, but you don't because there's no common sense to the digital music legal issues. And that's why we brought in an attorney, Alex Wellen, author of Barman, to help us negotiate all these complexities. Thanks for joining us, Alex. Thanks for having me. All right, so I know what I can do with my old Walkman cassettes. Right. I can make all kinds of dubs. I can make you know, mixtapes for my loved ones. And how can I apply that to digital music? That's exactly what I set out to figure out. If you wanted to back up your music, like you said, and it was analog, and you wanted to put it on tape, you would be fine. But under the Audio Home Recording Act, if you wanted to make a digital copy, two things would need to happen. First of all, you would need to make copies of that music, okay? You would make copies of that music, but you would have to put it on, for example, a, a audio CD. Okay, what's an audio CD? Isn't that just a regular CDR, like a blank CD? It buy? looks exactly identical to any type of blank CD you would buy, except for the price tag. And it's because you're paying those royalties and the money's kind of trickling back to the people who ultimately... Uh, who ultimately made those CDs and paid a royalty fee, so they're trying to even, even the score. So if you needed to make a copy of something, you could make a copy of it onto one of these audio CDs. You can't use the computer, remember? You, you can't, can't, use, you the can't computer. use the computer So at all. you need a standalone machine that copies CDs, a standalone CD copier. And if you did those two steps, that would be one way to back up legally your digital music, just for you. Online music has changed the game significantly. So let's, instead of the CD that you buy in the store, you buy something online. This is where the computer can come into play. If, That's right. If I purchase my music from a legitimate online service, then there, I may be buying the license and the right to make some copies? Is That's that, right. Okay. To some extent. They've already agreed and negotiated with the artists and the publisher. So at this point, if you buy it online, you want to burn it, you want to make copies of it, there are some rules. You could make a few copies for yourself, personal, non-commercial use, not give it to anyone, enjoy your music in the car, enjoy your music on your iPod, for example, or however you get your music. But if you wanted to give it to somebody else, they say, if you look in the contracts for Apple and for Napster, that you can make Make seven copies of a playlist. If you wanted to take that song, make it part of a playlist, you could do that seven times, put it on a CD, and probably give it to a few friends, and you would be within the contract that Napster and Apple has. Roughly summing it up, if you pay extra money for something that says it's an audio CD on it, and use a CD burner, a CD recorder, actually, not a necessarily a burner, because a burner sometimes goes in a computer, but it's standalone CD recorder, then you're okay. To some extent, you to, can make some backups and some music. If you way. just make a few copies for yourself, you're in violation, possibly, of the law, but Technically. you're probably, gonna, they're not going to go after you. Or you buy your music from an online service and you follow the licensing agreements. Now that's just the tip of the proverbial iceberg of online music litigation. Alex has been so good to write us up an article to go along with all of this stuff to kind of dive a little deeper into it. Thanks for joining us, Alex. Thanks, Tom. You can get that article. It's one of our insider secrets at CNET.com. I'm Tom Merritt. Thanks for joining us.